In this example, we're going to examine how to estimate experimental data with test and control groups and before and after conditions. So in this example, a retailer is testing out the effectiveness of a promotion campaign using 100 stores as the control group and 50 stores as the test group. And on the left, these are the control group data. And on the right, here are the test group data. So the data is laid out like this. For each row here, it represents a specific store. So in the control group, we have a total of 100 stores. For each store, the data points represent the time period before the promotion campaign was run and the time period after the promotion campaign was run. In the control group, there's no campaign. It's just the time periods before and after. In the test group, for each testing store, there is a campaign run during the period between before and after. These two data points represent the daily sales of the product during the time period before the campaign and during the time period after the campaign. There was no campaign run for the control group stores. And then for the testing store, for the first store here, again, this is the daily product sales before the campaign. This is the daily product sales after the campaign. As you can see, because of the random conditions in these marketplaces, in the test group, sometimes it increases, increases, sometimes the sales would decrease. Similarly, in the control conditions, sometimes the sales decrease and sometimes the sales increase. So the question boils down to now we have 100 stores in the control condition and the 50 stores in the testing condition. Can we compare these two different sets of results and come up with a statistical conclusion whether the campaign actually worked by improving the sales? So to conduct this test, first let's calculate the averages will be equal to the average of product sales before and control shift down, select all these close the parenthesis and enter. So now we have the average sales before and then we can copy this over to calculate the average after. So there's a slight decline in this condition. And then don't worry about this divide by zero. Once we have numbers in the difference, it will automatically correct itself. Now let's first calculate the store level difference. It's simply equal to the after minus the before and then enter. And now we copy this all the way down by double click here. So now we see that across the 100 testing stores, on average, there is a product decline of 3.2 units. And this kind of decline could be caused by seasonal trends, could be caused by the overall market conditions that apply to all stores. That is why we want to have a control condition to control for these kind of overall market conditions, seasonal shifts, time trends, etc. So that is what we have for the control condition. Now for the test group condition, let's again do the difference of after minus before for each testing store and enter. And then we copy this all the way down by double clicking here. And similarly, we can calculate the averages equal to average and select the first one, control shift down to all of them, close the parenthesis and enter. So now we see the average before and copy this to average to the average of after and a difference. So now we can already see that on average, there is a pretty big gap here. So that looks promising. However, in order to test the statistical condition, as we have shown in the video, we want to compare the distributions across all these stores versus all these stores. So these 50 stores versus these 100 stores. We cannot just compare the average, we want to compare the distributions. 
And to do this test, there is a very convenient formula in Excel that we can use directly. Generally speaking, for this type of comparison, we are going to do what you've learned in the stack course called a t-test. And in Excel, all you need to do is to type in equals t dot test and parenthesis. So in t-test, there are four parameters. The two arrays are the two sets of results you put in. The tails for most statistical tests, you should almost always put in a two-tailed test. And then we're going to look at the type when we're there. So the comparison we're going to do is the difference. How much difference there is across these 100 control group stores versus the difference across the test group stores. So array 1 is select difference and control shift down. So these are the control group conditions, comma. And coming back, array 2 are the test group differences. Again, control shift down and then comma. So now we have the input data for comparison. The next parameter is one tail or two tailed. Almost always use the two tails. And the next you have three choices paired, two sample with equal variance, two sample with unequal variance. Here a paired test would have been if we have run all these 100 stores and then we continue to run tests on these 100 stores, then the results each row corresponds to the same store that would be paired. But that's not what we have. We have 100 stores for control group separately, 50 stores for test group. So that's not paired test. So we have really two samples. And since we don't know whether they have equal variance or not, the safe bet is to choose three, conduct a two sample test on unequal variance. So let's just be conservative. And so that's three and close the parenthesis and enter. So that's pretty much it for these tests. This is why Excel makes things a lot easier. Let me use a percentage since this is what we are going to look at. And this percentage is what we've learned in Stack Course called the p-value. And this p-value we have is less than 5%. And we judge the difference as significant and positive. The campaign has a positive effect on sales with an increase of 21 minus negative 3.2 increase of 24.2 units per day. So that we have conducted an analysis of experimental data with a test group and a control group in the after versus before conditions. That concludes this video.